Hello people, so Peter here down in the old man shed. Uh, just want to give you an update of what's happening with the layout since my last video, which um, you know wasn't a very good video because I had problems with the, the class 33. Uh, well, as you can see, the 33 she's running sweetly now, he says, touch wood. <laughs> uh, but she's only been running today. I've not been using it. Um, I got the motor from Olivia's and then I started looking into my layout because I thought to myself, just, you know, just what's going wrong now, you know, with all these motors that I seem to be having trouble with. So, um, I looked before I started running them as I am now, I started, I've done some steps on my layout now and that is uh, what this video is about. So, first things first, it is 7 foot by 4 foot, the board, right? But that includes the, uh, the programming track and that side in there. So ostensibly, the running area is the two loops, which you can say is 6 by 4 So we're not talking a big layout, guys, obviously. We're not talking electrified points. They're all manually operated because, being that where it is, when I sit down in the front, Virtually 90% of all the points that I want access to, I can just reach over and flick. So there's no point control. So the only power the uh, controller needs to supply is to the track. And so that's coming out, the, obviously the control box coming down to this little shed here. Because that is a Hornby power track. If I take that off, there's one of the first steps I took. Uh, since um, the last uh, video. I've beefed up the wiring to the track to make sure that uh, it wasn't a question of power supplies giving me aggro. I don't know. But anyway, I had some spare thick normal, um, you know, in, uh, house grade wiring and everything, you know, wire mains that we use. So I've done that for that. And underneath the baseball, it's soldered wires that then come up and are soldered to the track here and here. Alright, so that's got its own, you know, that's got feed, that's got feed, that has got feed down to there, but I don't know why, but I've even soldered it at a point here as well, right? <laughs> just in case I didn't trust the fact that you're just pushing wires through into the plug, alright? So the wire is actually soldered to the track. From the power of from the power of the Gauge Master uh, Positive 2 Express. Put that back, and that hides all the gubbins. So that was one thing with the wiring there. So I know the wiring is good. I replaced the wiring from the Positive Express to the track, and uh, she's hiding underneath the and the curtain. That's why the uh, wire comes back out. Yeah. So the Gauge Master Positive Express is hiding underneath there on a little table underneath out the way and I've just got the controller coming out here so she was good for three and a half amps evidently and uh, on doing that also what this explains to you the power supply to the shed there's my electrics all right it's not you know we're not talking about a Heath Robinson job we're talking about you know professional electrician came you know you've got armoured cable coming up into the shed underneath there and you've got, uh, well you can see I'm not even using, I'm using two of those sockets. Uh, the white thing that goes off to the lights above. That gives power to the, uh, the shed lights. So it's all done and then of course I've inserted the, uh, the, the LED strip lights. And they are running off, I, th I think I've done it in parallel. And there's a bank of plugs there that uh, I can turn them all off individually or have them all on so I've got control of that. Um, the white lead there from the junction box goes down to a multi-plug uh, socket adapter on the floor. The lead is completely extended, it's not a very long lead, I'll just show you it. Because this is where the power supply comes down to. There you are. It's one of the ones that you use on the computers because it's got surge protection in it. Uh, the switch at the very end I've masked over with masking tape just to keep it on because it's very, you know, my gosh, you, 
all you've got to do is sneeze and turn the thing off so to stop that happening I just put the masking tape so it's not it's not broke that's what I've just done to make sure so that's got a surge protector but also plugged into the surge protector bank is another one that sing, single one the one I've got to press reset and all the rest of it to check the wiring every time the circuit every time and then to that is plugged the power supply and I'll just put this this board I'll slide across so that uh, that doesn't accidentally get caught cover that over and come back here and power supply this is one of the things I've done hopefully that will now not give me any more grief if that's what's the cause hidden underneath the building is me all singing all new all singing all dancing DCC Concepts power supply and of course you know they advertise that as lots of uh, bits and pieces inside there the most stable stable power supply you can get you know and all the rest of it and that's chucking out five amps and they say that it's not AC current it's actually chucking out DCC current which is obviously what's the perfect uh, solution for your layout and from there obviously it goes down underneath the uh, the baseboard into the Progedy controller, uh, you know, the power stuff, uh, unit. So I'll just put that little building on top of there to hide the fact it's quite a big, there we are, just to hide it so when you, when you see it, it just looks uh, disguised. And as you can see, I'm now running, I've been running the trains. Um, that's the Hatton 66's uh, touch board. I, mean, I am still suspicious, guys. But I've not had, I've not had an issue at all with the Hattons uh, since... I know you shouldn't have to, but since I made sure everything was stuck on and nothing's going to fall off, it hasn't. And they have performed perfectly. I know you shouldn't have to do it. It should be like that, straight out the box, but I'm very happy with them and that means they're both working absolutely fine and as you can see going around just pulling a couple of wagons is the Helgen because now I've done this with a power thing I'm thinking myself well you know there's nothing else I can do I've got surge protection and DCC power going to the track you know you name it and I still don't you know I still can't see if that was my problem but it's something I thought to myself, well, okay, let's let's see. So I'll do that. I might buy that little meter. I know, I know Alan at uh, Dragon Junction Mark II. <laughs> I love the Mark II bit, Alan. <laughs> He's uh, got one on his way with a meter, but it, it's telling you what's going to your track and how much power your motors are using. And on this track, although it's a six foot, four foot, um, there are at this moment in time 14 engines and of course all my engines there are um, obviously DCC but they're all sound fitted and they're all sitting there in their relative sidings even under in, even in the engine shed there's locos and whatever locos there so they're all sitting there waiting for a signal from the command station so is that too many engines to have on a track? I don't think so I don't think so I don't have them sitting there with the lights or the engines running. The only two that I've got, run, you know, that I normally have running is, is the two going around the main tracks. And sometimes this little front bit at the front here, I have one going around and going up to the little engine shed up there. Backwards and forwards if I want to exchange a loco. So, yeah, three, possibly four locos at the most with power. And the only other thing that's drawing power from the, uh, the layout are the uh, buffer lights, you know. Or at the end of the... Uh, is there one hidden behind there? Excuse me, just move it. Yeah, there's one on there. So, yeah, that's it. And obviously, and on some of the brake vans, they've got their uh, end of train lamps working. So there we are. That's where we are. So I'm uh, running trains now again because I'm thinking there's nothing else I can do. Gage Marshall Prodigy, well, you know, I'm not the only one who uses them. Uh, was it surging, the power supply? I don't know, but I've certainly, um, you know, gone overboard on that now. So, and, and uh, 
you know, this power comes off the house ring main, you know, it's all, all been done correctly, spurred off from the house ring main to come up to the shed, armour cable in, you know, that comes up the garden and everything. So, yeah. And I say, no complicated bus wires. There is no bus. It literally is from the controller to the track in one location and then, you know, soldered to the other two locations. So they've all got, you know, their own feed, as it were. And the points have got the Hornby clips on them. And I'll just show you this, just to, uh, I've done it before, but I've got the little tester to show power's getting to the track you know, everywhere. Uh, when all light when all the lights are on, that means it's getting a good this is a, a rose was it process uh, volt tester or meter tester so there there. So at the end of all the sidings and everything this one this one here is possibly the furthest point away from any electrical contact because it's the uh, there we are. it's me making it flicker that's it oh my all right I'm just not doing a very good job of um, holding it down and trying to hold the camera at the same time that's all so and even the one down here push that back even the one down here everything's uh, getting power so there's no need to have a small little layout like this can't see the point in having uh, any bus wires running underneath the board but in case there was a power surge somewhere or other well hopefully I've now you know alleviated that so that's it guys that's what I just wanted to tell you what I'm doing and uh, so I've been down here this afternoon and the Helgen now, she's running sweet as. And once again, thanks to Olivia's, they, they were really good. They, they probably, they took a, a, a loco that hadn't been sold, a 33, and took the motor out of it and then sent me the motor and I've obviously sent them back the dodgy one. And they may or may not get Helgen to uh, confirm, but uh, they think the motor, because it was, I must admit, the motor problem wasn't like the, uh, the Backman's. It ran super hot, really silly, stupidly hot. Whereas at least the other ones, it wasn't that as such. They, they just uh, stopped work or, you know, ran erratically. This one was running and then she literally started running erratically because the, the motor was so hot. When I touched the body, wow, blimey. I'm lucky that I didn't get any damage due to the heat melting, you know, doing some damage to the plastic body. I mean, even when you think that by the time I took the body shell off and moved the PCB ball to get to the motor, when I lifted the motor out, it was too hot to hold. So that just shows you how, how hot it was. And I've never had that before. Anyway, right, I'm going to sign off then and say thank you. Then what I'll probably do is... Uh, I'll just have the old sounds running. You can watch it. I'll just hold it on for a couple of laps. So we've got the old... Uh, And I'm sorry guys, all these EM2 speakers or earth moving speakers or whatever they call them, that's got double iPhones in there. So easy peasy to fit, no problem without fitting them in there. And I think that gives a more class, you know, more the 66 sound than the EM2. I don't know where, why everybody thinks that a class 66 is so bassy. It ain't, it's got a whine. It's not like a class 37. And this, to me, is much, much better. So I'm sticking with that. Even if I'll get another one, I'll, I won't bother with the Earth Mover speakers. I'll just put a couple of um, iPhone speakers in there. Right, let's put the 33 on. <laughs> Listen to it. Oh, that's a cracking sound, isn't it? Sounds like a bag of nails. Yeah, it's great though.
Just running around with some stupid wagons. There she comes. So all good. So there we are, everybody. So hopefully, um, yes, yeah, some you know people will be pride saying, Peter, there must be something wrong with the uh, the power supply to the layout for you to have all these troubles. So. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, maybe. So that's why I rewired it. Got the new, quite expensive, but let's hope it's got all the whistles and bells that it says it's fitted with. And uh, if that was the trouble, hopefully that's um, now sorted. Only time will tell, guys. So, uh, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. And I'll call it a day. Certainly seems to be running all right. I mean, just before I do, what what I'm trying to get across to you guys is, if there was trouble, why is it only certain locos that I've had trouble with? Because I've got um, the, the, this layout will be three years old in August, and with that there's some locos that I've had from day one and they're still running fine so just just to sort of uh, this is why I didn't do anything sooner because I couldn't see you know if everything if other locos are running okay what's going on so I say there's 14 locos on on the actual layout is at the moment there's a, there's a few uh, engines sitting here in my garage here waiting to uh, have their turn of running. And with some more up there as well, as the, uh, the 67s and the, uh, the 60 waiting up there. So yeah. Okay. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Thank you. But it's bye for now. Alright. Goodbye everybody. Bye bye.